Hi, this is Jackie Wright, and welcome to 30 Minutes to Success Inspirational Tuesday Talk. I am pleased that you are joining me by Zoom, which we're going to also place on uh, YouTube. But in the meantime, we're going to go live on um, Facebook. So uh, according to all indicators, we are live on Facebook. Uh, this is Jackie Wright, and I thank you for uh, joining me here once again for 30 Minutes to Success Inspirational Tuesday Talk. And uh, the indicators are not uh, working as they usually do, but we're just gonna go ahead and have this conversation anyway. Let's see if I can press the button once more and see if we are still working this or not. So here we go. I think we are starting to go live on Facebook. Hi, this is Jackie Wright, and I thank you for uh, joining me for 30 Minutes to Success Inspirational Tuesday Talk. It's uh, great to be with you today. Uh, today, I am traveling. I happen to be in the great state of Florida, although uh, the screen behind me on Zoom is uh, lovely San Francisco but uh, I am blessed to be in one of my elders homes. Uh, as a matter of fact, my uh, father's contemporary, one of his cousins, and we are down here and we're just gonna keep the word flowing no matter where we go as the Lord allows and everything. So today we're gonna talk about uh, the fact that no one is above the law. Now you can look at all of the scriptures uh, that I am presenting uh, by uh, going to the description box in Facebook. And then additionally, uh, you can get the information that's going to be on screen um, with, uh, with Zoom, where I will be able to show the scriptures uh, as I am going over them. So uh, thank you so very much for hanging with me as we um, go ahead and get things into place. So we're going to uh, share this screen here and uh, be able to look at the scriptures that we have. And basically, uh, the topic today, can you believe it? It is already April, April 4th, and it is Holy Week. Uh, we're going into uh, the Resurrection Sunday, which is the greatest news of all time. Uh, as you look at my um, my screen, on Zoom, you can see that the greatest message, the greatest gift of all time is, is explained in John 3, 16. And that is, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth in him shall not perish, but shall have everlasting life. And that's one of the things we want, everlasting life. We want to get out of this life alive. And Jesus allows that. And that's what uh, the Holy Week, the story, the passion that he um, expressed for us, uh, not only spiritually, but physically for us as well, is all shown in the gospels. And just to think that he ignored the pain and the shame of the cross so that we could have life and have it more abundantly and so that we could live forever. And of course, that's the greatest gift of all time because as we know from what the Bible um, tells us that our eternal life was forfeited uh, by Adam and Eve uh, by the choices that they chose to go against the law of God. And as a result, we have uh, no life outside of the Lord Jesus Christ. So I just invite you to uh, take a look at the scriptures. It's not about what I'm saying and the scriptures that I uh, share with you hopefully will uh, give you some indication of where you need to go and find out what thus saith the Lord. Don't take my word for it uh, by all means, but, uh, you know, go and reason with God. There's a scripture, I think, in Isaiah that says, come, let us reason together. So reason with God uh, for yourself, because it's something that's very important because we're going to spend more time outside of our life period than we do inside of our life period. If you look at the people that were born in the 1200s and the uh, um, 1600s, 1800s, even the 1900s, and uh, their lives 
uh, their experience, their existence, it's outside of that time um, period that they had on earth. Um, so much more. It's, it's uh, a lot more time if you were to evaluate time. But, you know, when we leave this earth, uh, you know, time ends and we have eternity. And so we want to have eternity with the Lord Jesus Christ. That's what the Bible says. That's what I believe. And I uh, thank God for the opportunity that he gave us through the Lord Jesus Christ, redeeming us uh, once again. So our key scripture today is we're talking about the fact that no man is above the law. And you must, um, excuse my voice a little bit, I am um, dealing with a little bit of a <clears throat> scratchy throat, a lot of traveling over the last week or so. So in Revelations 20, 11 to 12, it says, then I saw a great white throne and him who seated was seated on it. From his presence, earth and sky fled away and no place was found for them. And I saw the dead, great and small, standing before the throne and books were opened. Then another book was opened, which is the book of life. And the dead were judged by what was written in the books according to what they had done. So there it is, the Bible's uh, explaining to us that our lives are just not happening, but uh, there's a recording going on of uh, what we're doing, what we're accomplishing. You know, and speaking of recording, um, there is a scripture that talks about the back in Psalm that even our tears, that God collects our tears and that he has a book that has our sorrows um, written in it. And so just the meticulous care that God has for his creation is really wonderful. And it, it really marks the fact that that's something that we should do. We need to make an accounting. We need to um, just um, enjoy and make most of even the simplest, smallest things in our life. Um, there is much significance to it. Um, our bonus scripture that I go over every week is Psalm 22, 24. And it says, for he has not despised nor abhorred the affliction of the afflicted, nor has he hidden his face from him. But when he cried to him, he heard. And also so 86 and 5 reaffirms that, uh, that same statement that, you know, God, there's nothing um, so bad that God can't hear us. And that when we cry out to him, he hears us, he makes a way. And it's just a, a matter of us paying attention to what he says uh, as he makes a way for us. But our PowerPoints for today, um, if you not, not get anything else out of this conversation, hopefully you'll get this. God's law prevails over all. Bottom line, it is the one that prevails over everything. No one is above the law. No one is above the law of God. And then something that we go over every week uh, as a PowerPoint is the fact that Jesus is the creator. And it says it in John 1 and 3, Colossians 1 and 16, and Hebrews 1 and 2, that Jesus is the creator. So uh, when we're thinking about uh, how we came into being, uh, Jesus Christ is the one that um, created us. And, and you could see why he laid down his life for us because it was the creation that he made. And uh, the resources that you can receive, uh, <clears throat> God is the judge. Uh, there are a number of uh, scriptures, about a hundred or so, uh, right there in Bible, uh, openbible.com.info, and then obeying God's law. There's some additional uh, scriptures that you can take a look at. And then the well, Bible verses about obeying the law that's in the King James Version, you could take a look at that too. And so there's nothing like having something in writing and God has put things in writing for us in terms of how uh, we are to live our lives and in living um, there is a call for obedience. And with obedience, there is reward. You know, and sometimes we have been so programmed by life, life, life 
that we um, are not able to um, to do what we should be doing uh, according to what the word of God says, you know. And with that, you know, you don't have to throw up your hands. You don't have to give up. But that's where the Holy Spirit comes in to help us with our infirmities, to help us with things that are not in alignment with God. And his uh, gentle teaching uh, will bring us back in line uh, with um, the word of God. And I say gentle, uh, but in some cases uh, it's uh, stark uh, action or reaction um, that we receive to get us in uh, right order with God. And one of the scriptures as we're talking about today, um, no one is above the law. No one, I don't care how famous they are. I don't care how rich they are. I don't care how poor they, they are. Just because uh, you're poor, um, if we are poor, we do not uh, get away with something just because we haven't had anything most of our lives. Uh, that is not an excuse. Everyone is accountable. And whether you have a lot in the bank account or you don't, uh, whether you had a mother and father, or you don't, whether you had support of your community or you don't, uh, you know, it's still an equal action that you can take to either obey the law of God or not. And thank God uh, that there is a forgiveness and that God gives us uh, forgiveness. So, so that's something uh, to take in consideration too as we uh, live this life. And, but Galatians 6 and 7, it says, do not be deceived. God cannot be mocked. A man reaps what he sows. And so there is the bottom line. Um, you know, there is an action that we take and then there is the consequences of those actions. And we need to keep that in mind uh, in terms of the law. And when we ignore the law, uh, things build up, build up, build up until uh, it's a, a crescendo uh, that occurs where there is judgment that falls upon us based on the things that we have decided to do, the things that we have done. And so I would just encourage you not to ignore uh, what the word of God says. In Revelations 20 and 11 through 12, it says, then I saw a great white throne and him who was seated on it from his presence, earth and sky fled away and no place was found for them. And I saw the dead, great and small, standing before the throne and books were opened. Then another book was uh, opened, which is the book of life and the dead were judge by what was written in the books according to what they had done. And so here you have, you know, their books, there's an accounting that goes on. And as a result of that accounting, um, you know, we have um, God making assessments and judgments. And sometimes, you know, there's that scripture that says that sometimes the sins of individuals go before them, before the throne, and then some trail behind them. And so sometimes the consequences of our actions are not always immediate, but they are always just and they will occur. And so just because uh, you know you're wrong and you're doing wrong, uh, don't stay in that state. You can throw up your hands, hands up and uh, ask God to forgive you, ask the Holy Spirit to help you. And of course, uh, Jesus is at the right hand of God, the Father, standing they're interceding on your behalf. Isn't it a marvelous thing to think that, okay, you know, nobody is above the law. If you miss it with the law, you still have an advocate for you. You have the Lord Jesus Christ. His whole experience on his mission on earth was advocacy for us so that he advocated so that we could have life. And it's just so beautiful. Uh, if you look at John uh, 17, just before he was getting ready to, uh, to be on the cross and he was praying to the father. And he said, I pray not only for these, the disciples at the time, but for those who will believe because of their message. Oh my goodness. 
So can you imagine, how can we lose when we have the Lord Jesus Christ that is uh, praying for us and everything? But let's examine a little further. What about um, the law? Is that something that we should, um, should be even trying to achieve? Because we have the law of God and then we have man's law. And sometimes men's law doesn't always align up with the law of God. And I'd always say, like, if man's law is not aligning up, you you need to get in, in, um, in alignment with what God says. But um, I was told some years ago, uh, in terms of a lot of the laws of our land here in the U.S., that a, about a third of them or so are based on Judeo-Christian uh, laws, laws out of the Bible and everything. Um, laws around inheritance, or laws around land, uh, laws, those those principles that are in place. So if you're in alignment with God's law, you're going to be all right with man's law for the most part. And where man's law falls short, I always say get in God's camp, you'll always be safer. In uh, Romans 13, 1 and 7, it says, let every person be subject to the governing authorities. For there is no authority except from God, and those that exist have been instituted by God. Therefore, whoever resists the authorities resists what God has appointed, and those who resist will incur judgment. For rulers are not a terror to those, a terror to good conduct, but to bad. Once again, let me go over that again. For rulers are not a terror to good conduct, but to bad. So we don't have to be afraid of the authorities uh, if we're doing what is right. And of course, you know, in this earth, there are imbalances, but we can call upon the name of the Lord to get those imbalances right. Because uh, as it says in 61, Isaiah 61 and 8, God loves justice. So if you're uh, moving towards justice, uh, you are moving in the power of God. And so um, you are you can be assured that you're not going to lose out. Ultimately, God's word always prevails. And as I continue in this portion, it says, would you have no fear of the one who is in authority? Then do what is good and you will receive his approval, for he is God's servant for your good. But if you do wrong, be afraid, for he does not bear the sword in vain, for he is a servant of God, an avenger who carries out God's wrath on the wrongdoer. Therefore, one must be in subjection, not only to avoid God's wrath, but also for the sake of conscience. So there you have it. It's like the laws are to be obeyed. For the whole law is fulfilled in one word. You shall love your neighbor as yourself, as it says in Galatians 5.14. And so there you have it. Um, If you love your neighbor as yourself, then you're not going to be too far outside of uh, the realm of doing right. And you won't be outside of righteousness if you uh, love your neighbor as yourself, that basic. And of course, you know, the before that is to love the Lord, thy God with all thy heart, thy soul, thy mind. And if you do that, everything else is going to fall into place and you can love your neighbor as, as yourself. And where we are deficient in those areas, oh, wow. Once again, throw up your hands. Help, Lord. We can always ask for help. In First Peter uh, 2 and 14, it says, Or to the governors as sent by him to punish those who do evil and to praise those who do good. So that portion of that scripture basically says the governors, the people are in charge. You know, they are there to punish or to praise based on the action. Uh, You reap what you sow, the good or the bad. In Psalm 96 and 13, it says, Before the Lord, for he comes, for he comes to judge the earth. 
He will judge the world in righteousness and the people in his faithfulness. So there it is, you know, God's going to be judging us. And many times that judgment, you know, based on reaping what we sow in this life, we can already feel it. Um, that judgment um, that is is happening. In Hebrews 4, 13, it says, and no creature is hidden from his sight, but all are naked and exposed to the eyes of him to whom we give must give a, an account. There it is. We must give an account. There's nothing we, we can't hide. Um, there's a scripture that talks about in the end times that people are going to be running to the mountains and saying to the mountains, fall on us. But, you know, they're not, the rocks are not going to fall on them because uh, there is not going to be any place um, that we can hide uh, from God's eyes and from his judgment. And what's so beautiful about it, it's not something to be fearful of. You know, if you are uh, moving toward the things of God, you don't have to be afraid. You can be confident of the fact that you know, God is with you, that God is for you, that God has uh, your best interest in mind. So I just uh, tell you to trust in the Lord in all that you may experience in everything. And it also says in Romans 2, 16, on that day, when according to my gospel, God judges the secrets of the men by Christ Jesus. So there are not going to be any secrets um, that are going to be uh, be held back. And here is a scripture that um, talks about false teachers and um, prophets. Uh, the prophets are going to be uh, judged. The false prophets are going to be judged. Yeah, that should be false prophets uh, judged because there is going to be um, a consequence to uh, what's happening where a lot of people are being misled and they think that they can uh, live any kind of a way and, um, you know, be accepted of God. And then all these things that happen negatively in our community, um, you know, the, the loss of our children that happens, all of the financial um, upheaval that is occurring. And it gets back to that, that simple law to love thy neighbor as thyself. If we get just move toward that you know and the bible also talks about the time that there is uh, going to be a time when the word of god is not going to be in the earth there will be no restraint and so therefore people are going to live and do uh, whatever they want and a lot of uh, people are going to be hurt and you know the the consequences of not having the word of god as a restrainer uh, the consequences of that um, they're going to be tremendous to the point that people are not going to uh, want to live. And there's going to be a time when they will try to kill themselves and they won't even be able to kill themselves because of the judgment of God that is going to be on the earth. You can't get out of it. So um, I would just say, don't go by what I'm saying here, but just evaluate and everything. And we see... Um, sometimes so many people of great stature because they're celebrity, they get away with things. So it appears to us, but they're getting their own personal judgment. And at some point in time, we're going to see the revelation of their, their judgment before men as well. So I just encourage you to, you know, draw near to the Lord, you know, come reason with him, as he says in Isaiah and let's look at 2 Peter 2, 1 through 22. It says, for if God did not spare angels when they sit, but cast them into hell and committed them to chains of gloomy darkness to be kept until the judgment, if he did not spare the ancient world, but preserved Noah, a herald of righteousness with seven others, when he brought a flood upon the world of the ungodly. Mm, that makes me think about the fact that, you know, um, even uh, James Baldwin has that book that says, Next by Fire, meaning that, okay, the earth was destroyed by, um, by the water, but ultimately it's going to be destroyed by fire. And continuing on in that, that 
<clears throat> passage, it says, if by turning the cities of Sodom and Gomorrah to ashes, he condemned them to extinction, making them an example of what is going to happen to the ungodly. And if he rescued righteous Lot, uh, greatly distressed by the sensual conduct of the wicked, for as that righteous man lived among them day after day, he was tormenting his righteous soul over their lawless deeds. And he saw that he saw and he heard. And the Lord knows how to rescue the godly from trials and to keep the unrighteous under punishment until the day of judgment. And especially those who indulge in the lust of defiling passions and despise authority. They promise them freedom, but the, themselves are slaves of corruption. For whatever overcomes a person, to that he is enslaved. Oh, wow, there's a lot uh, that could be unpacked uh, from this. But when you look at the fact that, you know, it says that God can uh, protect the righteous uh, while keeping the unrighteous under uh, punishment until the day of judgment. So, you know, even before the day of judgment comes, there is, uh, you know, punishment that happens. So uh, what is it? The wages of sin is death, but the gift of uh, God is eternal life through Christ Jesus. So there is punishment that can occur in the here and the now. And that's not even the ultimate um, judgment that occurs. And then um, where it says they promised them freedom. And that's what's so um, bad about uh, false prophets and false uh, teachers. They promise freedom. Oh, you can do this. You can live in any kind of a way. There's no problem with that. You know, God understands or whatever rationale they give. And but really, they themselves are slaves to corruption, as the Bible says. Uh, and it also makes a very good point that whatever sin has overtaken someone, that's what we're enslaved to, whatever it may be that is destroying you. So one other thing to take a look at is 1 Corinthians 6, 2 and 5. And it says, or do you not know that the saints will judge the world? And if the world is to be judged by you, are you incompetent to try trivial cases? Do you know that we are to judge angels? Wow. How much more than matters pertaining to this life? So if you have such cases, why do you lay them before those who have no standing in the church? I say to you, uh, I say this is shame to you. Can it be that there is no one among you wise enough to settle the dispute between the brothers? Oh, there's a lot in that. You know, for one thing, uh, it's talking about the fact that uh, the disputes uh, between Christians, and there are, you know, uh, Acts shows that in so many ways and so, so other things that uh, happen in the Bible. And it says, hey, you've got the ability. You can... Um, settle these disputes. And do you know you have a higher calling than just these trivial things? You are going to be judging the world and you are going to be judging the angels. So here we are, we see there's kind of a hierarchy. God has designed a system in which his people will have a high calling to help make a difference. So uh, I share that with you um, to think about um, there's a lot to unpack there. And as I said, I've said many times before, I am not a biblical scholar, but these are some things that are being introduced, you know, you know, the thought of like, you know, I've heard the saying, oh, I don't want to be uh, uh, a Christian. I don't want to give my life to Christ and just be on a cloud playing a harp all day long. That seems so very boring. Well, this is just an indication right here that um, we have some responsibilities and we're going to be judging angels and we're going to be uh, judging um, mankind. There are some responsibilities that we have. And just like when Jesus says and uh, says in 1 Thessalonians 4, 13 
8 through 18, that uh, while the, the great witnesses, the people who were dead in Christ shall rise and will come with him when he returns to the earth. Uh, and, um, you know, there's a responsibility there. We're going to be taking a hold of what those things are that we should be doing. So anyway, there's a lot going on in the news and things are not always balanced as they should be. But we should know that um, we have a responsibility and uh, to each other and to God. And that is to walk within the law. And if we do the basic laws of just love thy neighbor as thyself, do not kill, do not steal, do not covet, those kinds of things, our, our life on earth will be much better. But as people are getting further and further away from that, and there's going to come a time when the word of God is not going to even be presented or given on the earth, um, it's going to be absolute chaos, destructive chaos, hell on earth hell on earth in the lake of fire type of intensity. So for those that are hearing this word uh, today, I just invite you to ask the Lord Jesus Christ into your heart. And what better time than this time of Holy Week and as the resurrection day is coming and that's what it's all about. So I'm just gonna end with a prayer um, for us as we uh, end this conversation today. Dear Heavenly Father, we give you all praise, glory, and honor. To you be all the adoration that is due. And I just pray for anyone that hears this message or anyone that it is affected by this message by somebody else who heard it. I just pray for you to reverberate your message that God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son and whosoever believeth in him shall not perish, but shall have everlasting life. Father, I'm praying for everlasting life for those who hear. I pray for everlasting life for all of my family and all of those associated with me. I pray everlasting life for even my enemies, Lord. Your word says that we should um, treat our enemies fairly. Because, you know, I, we recognize the fact that um, there may be some people in heaven that we don't like, but you love them. And so, Father, I just pray in the name of Jesus that we will be in right order according to your word so that we might have life and have it more abundantly and that we may have it forever. I just pray whatever um, movement you and the Holy Spirit will make um that will change lives for eternity. Do so, Father. It's not by my many words. It's not by what I'm saying. It's not by my M-I-N-I -I words or my M-A-N-Y words. It's about your word, which is eternal. And I just pray for hearts to turn towards you, oh God, so that many, many beyond what I could dare think, ask, or imagine may be saved and be found in your kingdom. To you be the glory, to you be the praise, to you be the honor. In Jesus' name I pray. So there you have it, folks. That's what we were talking about today was uh, the fact that, you know, no one's above the law. We're not above the law. And so we just praise God and we thank him for uh, his many blessings. And they're all around us just like by the fact or to the fact that my uh, computer didn't shut off when it's, uh, they realize that it's uh, very low in power. So I just praise God for his blessings. And I thank my cousin Ida for allowing me to be in her home uh, during this time in Jacksonville. And just to um, share with you uh, what that says the Lord on this particular day. God bless and God keep each and every one of you. Thank you. Hallelujah. We praise you, Lord, and we give you all praise, glory, and honor for all the things you do.